Hello, we will then know. This is Ali Nese, and today I have the pleasure of being with Dr. Jerry Zimmerman, another one of our esteemed uh, Rewaldendo faculty. Jerry, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Dr. Zimmerman has uh, been a faculty with us for a number of years, as well as being the director of the uh, endodontic portion of the GPR program at Stony Brook uh, in uh, New York. And uh, Dr. Zimmerman has uh, lectures extensively in the, both the endosequence and now in the ESX uh, files and uh, is here today to, uh, to share a couple of cases with us. And the first case, I think, is a trauma, a, tra a traumatic injury case, right? Yes. Yeah, this was a 14-year-old uh, male who, who got hit in the face with a door and then his mom brought him to the emergency room in our area. And they sutured up his lip and they didn't really look in his mouth and he came to see me about 24 hours later the next day and his chief complaint was that he couldn't close his mouth and when we examined him we discovered that tooth number eight had a uh, incisal fracture with a pulp exposure and tooth number nine was uh, laterally displaced and uh, the crown was pushed towards the uh, palatal and the root was coming out uh, you know towards the buckle and that's why he couldn't close his mouth and uh, we took an x-ray and the x-ray showed that the tooth was a little bit out of position uh, but to really get a true picture of what this tooth looked at looked like we uh, took a, a CBCT and the, wow. C the CBCT uh, in the sagittal view showed that the uh, root was coming out the buccal plate there was a buccal alveolar fracture and uh, the, palate, uh, the root of the tooth was displaced towards the buccal so what we had to do in this case is we had to try to reposition this tooth. Uh, the problem was that it was about 24 hours later, so there was a blood clot in there mm. already, and it was difficult to push the tooth back in. But with the aid of the CBCT, we could see where the root was before, and uh, I was able to reposition the tooth and then, and then splint it. So that's interesting. It must have been probably difficult to uh, reposition as well because it appears that you have a little bit of a lip of bone here on the lingual aspect. So it's almost like a trying to put back a disarticulated joint, right? It was Can exactly I like that. It was the same motion that you would use if a patient opened their mouth too wide and they dislocated their TMJ. It was kind of a down and back and up mm. motion. And, it, and we used that motion with quite a bit of force to get the tooth back in. We got the patient numb so he didn't feel anything. That's wonderful. Uh, and obviously, the tooth like this, usually my experience has been uh, the same as you, Jerry, is that when you have, um, uh, you, when you have uh, uh, subluxations or uh, you know, severe movements of teeth with closed apices, these teeth generally don't do well. And endodontic therapy right. is indicated all the time. And it's usually a good idea to do it sooner rather than wait and watch because otherwise you would end up getting resorption, correct? Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the CBCT, you can see the tooth was displaced enough that its blood supply would be disrupted and then the tooth would go non-vital. So you want to start the endo on a tooth like this within mm -hmm. one to two weeks. But the priority is really to get a splint on right away. This and I was, can see that you put a splint there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, this was late at night. We had this uh, mesh available, a nylon mesh uh, that we put on with composite. Uh, more often, I use a fishing line, and I yeah. use that, and we put composite on, and we light cure it. And in a case like this, where there's an alveolar fracture, we want to leave the splint on for four to six weeks so the bone can heal up as well. And then, uh, you know, and then after that, we need to do the endodontic therapy. And it's usually a, you know, a good idea to do the endodontic therapy within one to two weeks. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, root damage, and you can Absolutely. get root resorption if you don't. Yeah, do because that. once you have a necrotic tissue in there, then the necrotic tissue is going to rec get recognized, you know, as a source of antigen, and you end up getting resorption of the root. Yeah. And I can see here on the post op, you've done a beautiful job here, nice and dense fill. Right. Is that uh, using the hydraulic? Uh, yeah, we used we used, uh, endo, we used endo sequence files, mm -hmm. and, and then we used a, a bonded obturation. Uh, with the uh, endo sequence sealer. So we treated tooth number eight, mm -hmm. and then after that, we also treated um, tooth number nine. Yeah, so you can see that it also went south, and you treated both of them. So right. And then restored the top of them, you rebuilt the um, right. um, the coronal put, area of the tooth as well. Yeah, we put composite in there. Everything was then, uh, splinted. So together. we left the splint on for six weeks in this case, and then we removed the splint. Uh, and then the teeth were restored after the splint was, yeah, was removed. Yeah, so that's the post-op after the splint was right. replaced. And, and this just shows a, a CBCT uh, three months post-operatively, and you can see that the uh, good portion of the buccal bone is healed up. You can see the tooth was repositioned in the right spot. On the in lower these, right side, you can see this is the pre-CBCT uh, sagittal view, and this is the post uh, f three months follow-up. Yes, wow. and you can see nice healing. And uh, you know we followed yeah. the patient after that, and they did quite well. Yeah, alveolar platus seems to have uh, filled in pretty nicely, yeah. and that's great. 
And it's interesting because oftentimes when you get a CBCD switch size little view, whenever you have a radio density of a material, you sometimes you get that little black line on the uh, uh, yeah. on the lingual aspect. Yeah, that, of it. that's just basically a contrast. Right. That right? that is called a uh, beam hardening. And beam what happens is that's right. that if you have any kind of metallic structure in a tooth, if you have a post in the tooth or gutter percher or a metal crown, you're going to get a radial loosen area around it. If you have an implant, it'll look like the implant's not integrated. Right. Uh, and this is just uh, beam hardening yeah. uh, of the image. So you have to be aware of that. This is great, and you know this is this, this shows another example of why CBCTs are uh, so helpful. Because here, with this one quick um, CBCT, preoperatively you manage to to recognize.